What's going on guys, it's CTA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to show you how to properly set up your SD card for your RetroFlag GPI case. Now yes, this video is going out a few days before the official release, but I wanted to make sure everybody understood how to do this when they got theirs in the mail. Unfortunately, there is a little bit of setup we need to do. First up, we need to get the screen and buttons working. They've made it really easy to do, and I'm going to try to make this as simple as possible. And then, as soon as we get all that set up, we're going to install the safe shutdown script. We need that in order to shut the Pi down safely by using the power button on the top of the GPI case. In this video, I'm going to be focusing on RetroPi, but the steps should be the same for Recall Box. One last thing before we get started here, you will need a Windows PC. You could do this on Mac or Linux, but in this tutorial, I'm using a Windows 10 PC. 7 or 8 should also work. Alright, so let's go ahead and get our SD card set up for the GPI case. So like I mentioned in this video, I'm going to show you how to get the screen, sound, and all of that working, plus the safe shutdown. It is a little bit involved if you've never messed around with RetroPi before, but I'm going to walk you through it, and I'm going to make it as easy as possible. So the very first thing we need to do is download RetroPie. Links for everything I mentioned will be in the description. We're going to go to Download, and we're going to download Raspberry Pi 0, Raspberry Pi 1. This is going to work with the Raspberry Pi 0 and 0W. Zero this is the image we need to flash. Now we need to download an application to flash it to our SD card. We're going to be using Etcher. This works for Mac, Windows, or Linux. I'm going to go with the 64-bit portable version for Windows. Next thing we need is the files for the GPI case. Now there are two sections here. The first section, GPI case, we're going to download. This is going to download a little bat file and we're going to place it on the SD card after we're done flashing and it's going to make the screen, buttons, and sound work on the GPI case. We're going to move over to the safe shutdown after we get everything installed. But I've also created a Wi-Fi config for you guys. We're going to drop this on the root of the SD card. There is some more information on the RetroFlag webpage here. How do I set up Wi-Fi if the GPI case is assembled and you can't use a keyboard? And this is what we're talking about, the WPA config. Now I'm going to create this file for you, and there's a link to Dropbox in the description. You can go ahead and download it. We need to edit this. But in order to edit these config files correctly, I recommend downloading Notepad++. I already have mine installed, just go ahead and download, make sure you install this properly on your Windows machine. We'll get to the Wi-Fi config in just a second, but first up, it's time to flash our SD card. I have a SanDisk 64GB card in my machine right now. I'm going to open up Etcher, and from here, I'm going to select the RetroPie image that I just downloaded. It's so right here, RetroPi 4.4, RPi 1, 0 image. Double click. You want to make sure you have the correct SD card chosen. I got that 64 gigabyte card here. I'm going to click continue and flash. So this is going to install RetroPi to the SD card, but we still have some setting up to do to get it to work on the GPI case. You may get some warnings that look sort of like this. Just go ahead and ignore them. We now have RetroPie installed on our SD card. I'm going to remove the SD card from my PC and then place it right back in. So you'll be prompted with a couple more warnings here. What we're looking for is the root directory of the SD card, which would be boot. Mine's labeled G. I'm going to snap it over to the right hand side. We now need to get the screen, sound, and buttons working on the GPI case for this image. That's why we downloaded the GPI case patch zip. We're going to right click and extract it to the desktop. We're going to open that folder up. We're going to go into GPI case underscore patch and we're going to take the other GPI case underscore patch and place it right on the root of our SD card we just flashed RetroPie to. This is the boot drive. We're going to open this up and we're going to install the patch. Just double click on install patch dot bat. There's also an uninstall patch. Install. Press enter on your keyboard. And we now have the SD card patch to work with the GPI case. This is going to enable sound, screen, and buttons to work with the case. The next thing we need to do is set up the safe shutdown button. And in order to do this, you could always just plug this into an HDMI source before you install the patch and set up your Wi-Fi. But like I mentioned, I have this WPA config. Downloads in the description. We're going to right click, edit with Notepad. I'm going to snap this over to the left hand side. 
What we have here is a little Wi-Fi config file. We're going to place this on the root of the SD card, but first up, you need to make sure you have your country set correctly. I'm in the US, so I have US. If you're in Europe, put EU. If you're in China, CN. Right down here, we have our SSID. We need to put our real SSID, and you can find that by checking your Wi-Fi network. I got a few here, but the one I mainly use for my Raspberry Pis is Unify 2G. Next up, you're going to have to put your password in here. So just double check your SSID and your password. We're going to click File, Save. Now this is already on my desktop. I'm going to take this, place it right on the root of my SD card. Got boot right there. And if you filled this out correctly, it's going to connect to this Wi-Fi network that we placed in the WPA config. So we're now ready to move over to the GPI case. We can take the SD card out of our PC, place it into the case, boot it up. We'll have sound, screen, and buttons working. Plus, Wi-Fi should automatically connect. We're going to find the IP address of our GPI case. We're going to come back to the PC. We have to be on the same network, and we're going to install the safe shutdown script. Let's move over to the GPI case now. Inside of the battery compartment on the GPI case, you'll see a little switch. This is the safe shutdown switch. Make sure it's on if you want to install the safe shutdown script. If not, you can leave it off. So I've got everything ready to go. I got my freshly flashed SD card in here, and it's also going to ask you to set up your controller. Just follow the on-screen prompts. It's very easy to do. We have a couple things to do before we install the safe shutdown script, so I'm going to go ahead and connect this to my game capture just so it's easier to see. Now it's time to make sure we have Wi-Fi set up so we can install that safe shutdown script. We're going to head into the RetroPie menu, all the way down to Show IP, and at the very top of the gray box, this is going to be my IP address, 192-168-1-63. Your IP may be different from mine, so go ahead and remember yours. We're going to exit this menu by pressing A on our controller, and we need to turn on SSH. So we're going to go to Raspi Config, Interfacing Options, SSH, make sure you have Yes highlighted, press your A button, OK, and we're going to go to Finish. So we are connected online. Make sure you remember your IP address. We have SSH enabled. It's time to install that safe shutdown script. We're going to move back over to my PC. We need to install PuTTY. We're going to connect to our Raspberry Pi remotely and install that shutdown script. All right, so there's a couple things we need to install this safe shutdown script. First up, like I mentioned, you do have to have the switch on to safe shutdown on the GPI case. Next thing we need is PuTTY. Links for everything are in the description. We're going to download it here. I'm going to grab the 64-bit version. I'm going to install it. Next thing we need to do is head back to the RetroFlag website, and we're going for the safe shutdown script. Now everything you need to know is here. We could do this directly on the Raspberry Pi, but unfortunately we don't have any extra USB ports to plug in a keyboard, so we're going to be doing it remotely on the GPI case. If you're running RetroPi, this is the one we're going to use. If you're running Recallbox, you'll use this one. So I'm going to snap this over to the right hand side. I'm going to open up PuTTY, the application we just installed. In the host name, we're going to input our IP address that's on our Raspberry Pi. We're going to click Open. Yes. We're going to log in as Pi, P-I. And our password is going to be Raspberry. So we're now logged into the Raspberry Pi. All we need to do is copy this right here from the RetroFlag website and paste it in here. Press Enter. It's going to run through everything for us and install that safe shutdown script on the Raspberry Pi's SD card. You may get a warning that says something like this. This means that the Raspberry Pi rebooted and the safe shutdown script is installed. All we need to do now is test it out. So I'm up and running, got everything installed. I'm going to turn the switch off on the top. It's going to go through the safe shutdown procedure and properly shut down the Raspberry Pi. 
There we have it. Turn it back on. So you now have your SD card properly set up for the GPI case. We have all of our buttons, screen, sound, and the safe shutdown script working. All that's left to do is add games and start playing. I've created a few tutorials on adding games over Wi-Fi, and I'll leave links in the description. If not, just do a quick Google search, and you'll find everything you need. So that's pretty need. much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. All links for everything I mentioned will be in the description, and don't forget to check out Retro Flag's website, because pretty much all the information I just showed you is on the site. It'd be really cool if you could hit that like button, maybe subscribe to the channel, but like always, thanks for watching.